I'm in Malaga. I've just been riding this, the Triumph Bobber Black. Bobbers have been selling about as fast as Triumph can make them this year. Supplies were limited in the first quarter, but by the middle of the year, the Bobber was the fourth best-selling motorcycle over 125cc. It outsold not just every other Bonneville, but every other Triumph. Only Kawasaki's Z1000SX and BMW's unassailable R1200GS and GS Adventure beat it. So no surprise that Triumph decided it was worth making another variant. It's the Bobber Black with a fatter front tyre, an extra front disc, thicker forks and lots of black where before there was chrome. Like the existing Bobber, it's got the high torque version of the 1200cc liquid cooled Bonneville engine. It makes 77 horsepower, so that's 20 horsepower less than the high power version, which is found in the Thrux and R. And despite the high torque claim, it also makes less of that at 78 pounds foot compared to 82.6 pounds foot. That's compared to the Thrux and R again. It makes it lower down in the range though, with peak torque at just 4,000 RPM and peak power at 6,100. So a snap of the throttle releases an immediate burst of acceleration from, from right down in the range, enough to quickly fire you past whatever it is that's getting in your way. More punch would be a better description for this version of the parallel twin than high torque, but I, I guess MP on the side of a cylinder wouldn't, would take more explaining than HT. Among the information that can be shown on the small digital display, under the analog speedometer is a numerical rev counter. But just don't worry about that. Instead, just change up for more of the same meaty, low range punch, which is delivered with a nice aggressive rumble from the exhaust. It's got an, a newly slash cut black pea shooter silencer. You get traction control with two riding modes, road and rain. It rained in Spain, so I made use of the softer throttle response in rain mode before switching to road as the skies cleared in the afternoon. So the Bobber Black is 9.5 kilograms heavier than its non-black counterpart, the original Bobber. It's 237.5 kilograms dry, Triumph still quotes dry weights for some reason, instead of 228 kilograms. It's not that the black paint's heavier, I hope. The extra lard is in the updated front end, it must be, because that's what's been updated. The forks are now 47 millimeter in diameter instead of 41 millimeter. The front wheel has shrunk quite a lot from 19 millimeters to 16 millimeters, but any change in the external diameter or weight will be offset by the much fatter 190 section Avon Cobra front tire. And of course, the new wheel is carrying that extra front brake disc. I think the Bobber Black felt a little slower turning than I remember the Bobber itself to be. Just a tiny bit more sluggish, tipping it into a lean, but it would take a back-to-back -back test to say definitively. The Bobber Black still handles well. It's easy to dominate and more settled through turns than is typical of cruisers, I think. It's got reasonable ground cornering clearance, so you don't have to think about running out of lean and crashing every time you see a bend. And the riding position offers an unlikely level of comfort with just, just a little bit of a reach to the straight handlebars. The seat is firm, but it remains quite a nice place to sit for a few hours and I think that's because of the shape it's kind of shaped like your bum isn't it so it, it will distribute the pressure so the Bobber Black retains the centrally mounted pegs of the standard model except they've now gone black it's a better position than feet forward I think for feeling in control through corners now one thing I didn't notice before when I rode the Bobber but I did notice on this is that with my foot if I put my toe on the peg my heel fouls the exhaust which is kind of slightly annoying so you've got to ride really with the arch of your foot on the peg. Taller riders will probably wish for a bit more leg room. I'm only five foot nine and my knees and hips were bent at an acute angle. The room can be increased a bit by undoing a bolt and sliding the seat backwards but then you're going down as well and it means a longer reach to the bars. The clocks can be adjusted to suit the, the new seating position. You just undo a bolt and, and tilt them. The KYB monoshock is the same as the Bobbers and that means only 77 millimeters of travel. The new fork is from Showa where the Bobbers was a KYB, but it allows the same amount of wheel travel at 90 millimeters. And I think it's probably that limited suspension travel that helps allow this bike to be so adept at coping with corners on the endless corners of southern Spain's famous Ronda Road, which is what we rode. Triumph says that short suspension travel is allowed 
because it's designed never to take a pillion. If you lift your weight off the seat, you can feel the shock reaching quite quickly. It's full, full extension. It just makes a little jolt as it gets there. You can't have sloppy rebound when there barely is any rebound. It's, it's firm, certainly. That's what you get for that short travel as well. And I'd be kind of tempted to say that's going to be uncomfortable on city pothole streets. But I rode the bobber on a test earlier this, uh, earlier this year through London. And I don't remember um, having any complaint of discomfort. Both ends are non-adjustable. My initial thought on applying that new brake with the new twin discs and Brembo calipers was, oh, it's still not that powerful. It is more powerful than the Bobber single disc, and which has got a two-piston Nissan caliper, but it basically just delivers a bit more force in response to a given pull on the lever, so it makes two-fingered braking easier. But I think the Brembo logo raises your expectations higher still. It's still only a two-piston sliding calipers on there, and the discs are the same size as the Bobber single one at 310 millimeters. In terms of equipment, it has gained one button cruise control. It's kind of self-explanatory. There's the one button. Um, you press it, it just a third gear or above, and it just stays at the speed you're going. What it means though, it's a good idea, I think, because you don't want to really be looking at the switch gear when you're riding. So why not just have one button? The only thing is, you lose the kind of uh, fine tuning that you get with cruise control sometimes with a button to just go a little bit faster or a little bit slower. You don't have that. So if you want to change the speed that you've set it to, the only thing to do is to, is to stop it, to touch the, the, the brake or adjust the throttle and then the, the, the cruise control just cuts out and then you reset it. The Bobber Black gained almost unanimous praise when we posted about it on Facebook and Twitter from the launch and it's clear from your comments uh, why it appeals so much. It's the styling. And there is a nice level of attention to detail in the Bonneville range, the whole range. For example, in the way the fuel injection has been made to look like carbs. And the fat front tyre and newly black parts and fat fork, uh, and the black bits including the levers, engine covers, handlebars and wheel hubs, they just add an interesting new styling choice to the bobber lineup, I think. And of course you get the more powerful front brake. For a full list of all the bits that have gone black, you, you can find that on the written review on Visedown's website. If there's anything a little underwhelming about the Bobber Black, it's that an interesting new styling choice in the Bobber lineup is basically what it is. You get the more powerful front brake, but otherwise the experience of riding doesn't seem to have dramatically altered. It's as though Triumph thought, oh look, the Bobber's selling really well, let's make it again. The Speedmaster that's on the way, now that's a Bobber which you can carry a pillion on essentially. It's kind of a more touring Bobber. Now that is a new model. But don't let that put you off. There's nothing wrong with being a lot like the original Bobber. We tested the original Bobber against the Thrux and R earlier this year, and we made it our winner. Although the Thrux and R is technically the better performing, insofar as it's easily the fastest, and it's got higher spec components, the Bobber is the one that goes faster than you feel it ought to. So it kind of feels more cheeky. It's a pleasant surprise every time you get on it. And the Bobber Black is a Bobber, just in black, and with that better front brake. It's a bit more expensive too. It's 11,650 in shiny black or jet black, try and call it, or 11,775 in matte black, whereas the bobber starts from 10,600.